Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, January 24th. It's been two weeks since my last update, so I hope you've all been well, that you've been stitching all the things. Uh, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I had a couple of people send me messages saying that they were binge watching. They had, you know, YouTube had auto picked and I just popped up and so they watched and they liked and subscribed and then they went back and started from the beginning. And I always think that is really awesome that uh you know somebody stumbled upon me and then they decide to spend many hours with me uh binge watching and i i just think that's great so thank you so much and welcome uh the last two weeks my uh, rotation sort of took a wee bit of a nosedive i got out of i still stuck with the rotation that i had but i had had plans to do a little bit better of a rotation and somehow I got out of alignment and it was kind of all over the place. And so I'm hoping that in the next two weeks I can sort of hit the reset button and get on track a little bit more. Um, but the reason why I sort of got out of my alignment, so to speak, was because um, if you follow me on Instagram or if you've been with me for any length of time, you know that on January 1st, the anniversaries of the heart stitch along started and so I was able to complete the first block I just needed my great-grandmother's initials and I was looking for uh, I I needed her her initials her date of birth or her year of birth and then um, her husband and then her children so I, that I could fill in all of the initials and so my grandma told me to contact my aunt Sharon who is my grandma's younger sister and I did and she brought me over great information, was able to help me out, and then she introduced me to FamilySearch.org, and I sort of fell down that rabbit hole a little, a little bit. So I did, I did uh, miss out on many hours of working on my cross stitch, and so I hope that I will be able to make up in the next two weeks. Before I go any further, um, I had someone contact me with a question. Um, Normally what I do is when, and I, I don't know if, um, I mean, I don't mind answering the questions in my floss tube videos. I just, you know, somebody will ask me a question, I'll just go ahead and answer it. But maybe what I need to do is take the questions that I get asked in the comments and address them during my floss tube videos. So Carol, who is Carol's Crafty on Instagram, she uh, sent me a message the other day and asked me if I would share how I store my cross stitch pieces when um, like my seasonal and holiday stuff, how I, I store them. So I, you know, I live in a small house, so storage is a big issue for me. Um, usually uh, on the uh, holiday ones like Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, they get stored in bins with the quilts out in the dungeon. And so what I do is I'll lay a quilt down and then I'll lay a cross stitch piece on top and lay another quilt down and lay a cross stitch piece on top. If the piece is too big to fit in the holiday bin, it will get put in my closet because uh, I do have some, you know, large ones. There's like the um, trick or treat fairy and there's like a big Lizzie Kate and some of those and all of those get stored in my closet and my bedroom. And then some of the smaller pieces that are either for, you know, spring, winter, winter, spring, summer, uh, and like Easter, because I don't have a lot of um, Easter Easter um, cross stitch yet, as well as like summer and, and um, 4th of July and things like that. Those are holidays that I'm, I'm working on. Um, they get stored in drawers. I have in the other room, if you've watched any of my videos, there's the, the big quilt. And then I don't know if that's a buffet table. It's just a little, a long, narrow, skinny table. It has three drawers in it and I will store my cross stitch pieces in there, face, faces together. And then in this room, there's a cabinet across the room and it has um, glass doors and two drawers and I store everything in there. So, cause a lot of those pieces are, you know, they're just a little itty bitty. Some of them are little pillows. And then I have the really long um, ABCs from Little House Needlework that I store in the cabinet. So hope that answers your question. They kind of get stored in a bunch of different places um, just kind of where I know that they will be safe 
and you know they won't get wrecked or you know warped or anything like that and then the ones that are stored in the bins out in my dungeon they get stored with the quilt so they're totally fine um i've been doing it since i started back into cross stitching and, and they're all doing really well i don't you know i'm i'm very careful about how i pack up the bins and so I, I've never had any issue with like glass breaking or anything like that because they are sandwiched between the quilts. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Um, and again, if you would rather that I address the question in my floss tube video, you can go ahead and let me know and, and I will, I will just compile, I'll compile them up and answer them in my next floss tube videos. All right. So <clears throat> my stitching rotation <laughs> has been... I did not get as far as I wanted to because, like I said, I had, I had fallen down that familysearch.org rabbit hole and it cut into my stitching time because I do stitch in the evenings. Uh, so uh, typically what I do is when, um, like around nine o'clock, I usually meander my way to bed and watch, you know, the stuff that we've DVR'd and I will usually cross stitch for an hour and a half to two hours. And I kind of found uh, my time cut into because I would end up being on the family search website. And then I don't, I don't really think that my mind was 100% on my task because I would be stitching and I would get to almost the time where I was going to stop for the evening and I'd realize I would make a mistake and I would have to spend the morning unpicking everything that I had stitched the night before. So it became a little bit of frustrating and um, I think I've got my act together. <laughs> hopefully. So uh, the last month or so, a little bit over a month, I've been working on my Queen of Freedom. And I think this one gets mixed up with Lady of the Flag because I've had a couple of people say that they wish that they would have bought this when it came out. Um, Queen of Freedom is widely available. You can get it at 123 Stitch. Um, I've seen it on Etsy. I've seen it um, all over the place. Um, so you can still get her. It's Lady of the Flag that you can't get anymore. I know it came out like a limited release and it's already sold out. And when you find it in the secondary market, people jack up the price to a ridiculous amount. But Queen of Freedom, you can still get everywhere. So if you are interested in stitching her, you know, you can pause my video right now and head to 123 Stitch and see if they still have it in stock because you can get it. So and that, this is where mine came from, uh, was 123 Stitch. I got it in the box of awesomeness um, for my sister-in-law for Christmas the year before last. So I have been stitching her on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara with all of the called for DMC, Mill Hill, and Krynik. Uh, let's see, in my last video, I think... I think on my last video, I had this big chunk of white here that I had to finish filling in. And so I've, I finished filling it in and then I have went over here and begun working on her lap. And I am loving her so much. She's, she's so fabulous. So I work on her on Saturdays and Sundays and I will keep her in my rotation, my weekend rotation until she is finished. She's beautiful. I love her. I'm having so much fun stitching her. I just love her. So hopefully I will have her finished, hopefully before summer, because it would be kind of nice to um, have her up on the wall in time for the 4th of July this year. I think that would look fantastic. Um, my husband, I already had a frame um, that was out, that's out in my dungeon that I thought would be perfect for her, but my husband said that I need to pick out something a little bit more special for her because I've been working on her for so long. She's one of those pieces that should be like professionally framed and a nice frame and all the things. And so he told me that um, I would, instead of me just putting it in a frame, he said that because it's so special, you know, I, I should have it professionally done. So that's probably what I will do. But when she comes home from the framers, eventually she'll be in this room on that wall right there. So I'm really excited and I cannot wait. So I'm just every, every weekend, I just stitch away and just try to knock off blocks of stitches so I can get her done. Um, so uh, Anniversaries of the Heart Stitch Along is going strong. Everybody seems to be having a great time stitching it and that makes me super happy. Um, I know that some have finished the first block 
and I have enjoyed seeing uh, what they have done with it. Um, most people are doing it all on one piece, which is a lot of fun. It will help keep me motivated, so that's fantastic. Um, Snow Garden is the first block in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. This is a sow that's being co-hosted by myself and Deborah, who is Canopied Stitches on Instagram. Kicked off on January 1st. It's a forever kind of sow, so it's not like there's any rush to finish it except for me. Um, I made myself the goal of finishing it by December 31st of this year. Um, I am stitching it with all different colors. Some of the called for, not too many of the called for, but I did change a lot of the colors and I will make sure to list those below um, showing what, um, what is called for and what I converted it to. And so this was my, my bundle. So there's um, some DMC, some Weeks, and some Gentle Arts that I used. I was trying to match it to the picture, and I think I came pretty close. So here's my progress. The first block is completed. I finished the last initials this morning, and stitching one over one is no joke. I spent quite a bit of time unpicking because for some reason I could not get it to go in the correct hole. So, but I, I've, I've succeeded. And so I added my great grandmother's initials. So her name was Martha. I put my, her husband, his name was George down here. And then they had seven children and this V, let's see, she is my great, great grandmother. So this is my great, great grandfather and their son, Vernon, is my great-grandfather. They had seven children together. And I found out a little bit of history on the treadle sewing machine that I inherited from my grandma. So my Aunt Sharon told me that the sewing machine, so what happened was is my great-grandfather lived in Yakima and he went to Colorado to go get his mother and his two sisters and bring them to Yakima. And so when he got here, they needed a place to live. And so he rent or he bought a house that was fully furnished and the treadle sewing machine was already in the house. And so she used it and brought it with her to Jervis, which is where uh, my great grandfather moved to um, with some, I don't think, I think only some of his, like my grandma was born in Yakima and there might have been one or two of her siblings born in Yakima and so they all came to Oregon and they lived in Jervis and uh, that's where my grandma learned how to sew on the sewing machine. My Aunt Sharon said she also learned how to sew on that same sewing machine and she even sewed her finger. She ran it right underneath the needle which that really hurts. Uh, so anyway, so it was neat getting a little bit more history on the sewing machine that I inherited from my grandma. And it was a lot of fun uh, spending a little bit of time with Martha and getting to know her a little bit better. So, and I have finished it. So it looks pretty great. So um, the next block is Valentine Rose. And so this one, uh, my son, Ethan, uh, he was born, in, or he is born, or his birthday is in February. He was born in February. And so this will be his block. And so I will put Ethan's name here. I'll put Ethan's first. And I haven't decided if I should put his middle name here or if I should just put his last name here. I haven't quite decided that yet, but this will be Ethan's block. And I will get started on that after I start. So I'm going to rotate the anniversaries of the heart with Brian's stocking. And so I'm gonna work a week on Brian's stocking. And when February rolls around, I will start working on this one. I'm not, originally I thought what I would do is I would work on each block in the month that it was released. But if I do that, I won't finish until February of next year because there are two bonus blocks. So I'm going to have to pick some time where I just work all the way through. And I don't know if maybe it'll be when the bonus blocks roll around and I will just continue on. I haven't quite, I haven't quite worked that one out yet, but um, 
I will try for the most part to work on them in the month um, that they were released, but I'll figure all that out. I just need to make sure I get it finished by December 31st. Wish me luck. Um, and then I have also been working on Baby It's Cold Outside by Heartstring Samplery. I think I started it on December 30th. And here is the progress that I have made so far. Um, I'm stitching it with all of the called for threads, except I did not, at the time that I started this, I did not have weeks grits. And so I am stitching it with, is it roasted? No, what am I stitching it with? I, I think it's peach ice cream is what I substituted in for the weeks. And I think the peach ice cream is here and then here and then the snowflakes. And then this is shaker white. So here's my progress so far. Um, the house looks not troublesome at all. I have spent a lot of time ripping out sections of the house because I'm not paying attention. Most especially this one right here, I have stitched. So what I did was, is I um, started from the bottom and I knew, no, I started from the top and I knew there was a window and a door or yeah, window and a door. And I knew that the window and the door were there. And I just kind of got into my own little world. And before I knew it, I got all the way to the bottom, but I forgot to put in the window and the door. So I had to rip all of this out. And I also did the same thing over here. I forgot there was a window up here. So I did the door and I did all of this and didn't put the window in. So I spent a lot of time stitching, ripping out and restitching it. Otherwise I think I would have been a little bit farther along. But now that I have completely finished the house um, and the trees, I just have the wording, the border, and then down here there's some more wording. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks to have it finished because it would be nice to have it out for a little while before I have to put it away um, for spring. Wish me luck. <laughs> I'm st and here is my, here's the threads that I've been stitching it with. And it's very beautiful. I don't know, for some reason my camera just does not pick up the colors very well. I don't, I don't understand why. I think maybe I need to get one of those little, um, ring lights because the lighting in here for some reason is not the best since I have switched new phones. So I don't know. I need to get that kind of under control. So I'm going to pause really quick and I'm going to pull out the, um, the plans that I will be doing. And then we'll move on to the giveaways because I have some, I also have winners for the last giveaway and, uh, all the fun things. This past week I journeyed up to acorns and threads. I had a list of threads that I needed to buy for some of the projects that I have kitted up. And I also was meeting Heidi up there. She had a quilt for me to quilt for her. And so we just decided to meet at Acorns and Threads. She needed threads, I needed threads, and it was perfect. Um, so while I was up there, um, it was really hard to resist the beautiful charts that are up there, but I did. I managed to resist. I only got what I needed that was on my list. And so I was super proud of myself, super sad to leave behind all of those great charts that were just screaming my name. But I will return for them at some point later on after I have stitched some of my stash. Not all of my stash because that's going to take me a long time, but at least I can reward myself maybe in the summer. <laughs> anyway, so while I was up there and one of the things that I have been seeing, um, a couple different places on Instagram and on Facebook and even on FlossTube is this cute little um, house by Pineberry Lane. It's just called Home. Uh, I think at one time, maybe it was a kit that you could purchase somewhere. I just had purchased the PDF download from Pineberry Lane. And when I saw the house popping up on Instagram and you know all over the place, I, I realized that I, I do need to stitch this. So I, went ahead and decided to kit it up. It's a, I mean, it's a small one. I know that house is going to take me a while. That's a lot of white stitches, but, um, I needed something that's going to be a little bit smaller to pop in between my next two projects. So while I was up at Acorns and Threads, I picked up the linen. This is a 32 count, um, 
Confederate gray weeks linen and they did not have roasted marshmallows which is what um, the house um, is called for and so I picked up some antique lace and I really hope it's going to show up on this linen if it's not I might I might try to grunge this up further to kind of help those threads um, show up and I might even go as far as buying some of the writ dye and seeing if I can make it just a little bit darker maybe lean it towards the gray side I don't know so that's what I'm going to stitch on the house I have a feeling it's really going to match that linen and so I don't know but I also picked up the rest which was endive and garden gate were the other colors called for and then I have the DMC 645 that is also called called for yeah so home by Pineberry Lane so as soon as I finish baby it's cold outside I'm going to pop that into my rotation and work on that while I decide what the next cross stitch is that I will be doing also while I was up there and totally frivolously I picked up the book of days um, 2020 this is by needlework press and it is just it's a calendar so it's just a way to kind of help me keep track of what I have been working on because what happens is, is during the week, and I, I have my rotation, and I know I've talked about my rotation a lot, so I have three projects that are in my rotation. I have an outstanding whip that is my weekend project, and it has been queen of freedom for the last month or so. And then I have two that I rotate um, with each other Monday through Friday. And what was happening is, is the thing that I would work on on Friday, by the time Monday rolls around, I would forget which one it was. And so I was having a little bit trouble keeping track of what I was working on. And it is kind of nice to know when I start something and when I finish it and see how many days it takes me. And it would just be, it would be easier to keep track. And so when I saw this, I had a 20% off coupon because I'd bought the little acorn book. And so I just picked up this little calendar. It was only $12. and. And I thought it was cute. I love these Quakers. And I was reading in here that um, Needlework Press is going to be releasing this chart in March. I think that's what it said. Sometime in 2020, they're supposed to release the chart. Um, but it's super cute. Anyway, also while I was up there, and I think I, I had a list. And so I picked up a Barn Gray, which I needed which I need, all of these I need for something. A picnic basket, a grits by Weeks, another garden gate, that one, um, this one's for um, Away We Ride. A tin bucket, nutmeg, cause I stole from Olga Stocking. And so some of these are for Olga Stocking. Harvest Moon, Driftwood, and Piney Woods. So, yeah, I've been with Anniversaries of the Heart. Um, I knew I had some of the called for threads and so I ended up robbing it from some of the ones that I'd already kitted up. So this is to replace what I took out of there. So that way when I get to them, I already have all of the thread. Um, one more thing is I received a little bit of stitchy kindness. Um, so in my video at the end of 2019, I think it was my whip video, I was talking about my Heaven and Earth Designs supersized Once Upon a Fairy Tale that I had picked up. Talked a little bit about why this particular one spoke to me. And uh, after the video posted, I was contacted by, and I apologize, Sandra, if I butcher your last name, um, Sandra Roja. I, again, I apologize if I'm butchering her name, but Sandra contacted me and she said that she was going to be um, de-stashing her DMC. And so she wanted to know if, um, if I was interested, could I send her my um, floss, the, the list of flosses that I was gonna be needing for my fairy tale. And she would go through her stash and see what she had and send me what she had uh, because she would rather see her stash go to a stitcher. And I was like, yes, please, that's amazing. And so um, a, w a week before last, uh, the package arrived and she completely kitted me up for Once Upon a Fairy Tale, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. And so I've been spending um, my free moments bobbinating. And so I am now totally 
um, ready to go. Um, I'm, not only did she send me uh, the floss that I needed, but if it called for, if you know, say you had a color like um, $37.99 and it needed four skeins, she would send me the, she sent me the four skeins. And so, I mean, I'm 100% kitted. I don't need to buy any more floss and it's just amazing. She is like my, my fairy floss mother. I mean, it was so generous of her to send those to me. I was going to wait um, and do my video and, you know, sh cause she went and she organized all of the bags. So she grouped them all together. And so all I had to do was open up the bag, pull out the DMC and just bobinate. And it was, I mean, it's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. And so I am so, so excited. And I was going to wait to show you the bags. Um, but she told me to get busy. So I went ahead and I, I bobinated them. I got everything ready to go. And I'm going to talk about, um, when I talk about my progress, I'm going to tell you my plans for Once Upon a Fairy Tale. So I'm going to clean everything up because I think I showed you, I mean, I only bought the floss up it and the floss and the little piece of linen. Um, so I'm going to um, get everything cleaned up, situate because I know my husband's going to be home soon. He went up to the grocery store and I told him to try to waste a little bit of time, but I know he's going to come before I'm done. So let me get this cleaned up and I'm going to pull what I've been working on and then we'll talk about my progress and all the things. Hold on a sec. So my plans for the next two weeks. I will continue working on Queen of Freedom on Saturday and Sunday. On Monday, my plan is to start uh, the stocking for Brian. So I um, gifted, I kitted up and gifted him the Victorian Father Christmas. Um, I've been promising him for 20 years that I would make him a stocking. And so this is the year that he's finally gonna get his stocking. Um, I meant to start this two weeks ago, but the all the stuff with the um with getting the anniversaries of the anniversaries of the heart going and just all of the you know the thread and just all of that fiasco with getting that one stitched and and all of the just all of the all of the delayed this one getting started and so on monday i plan to start this i'm going to work on this for a week so i'll work on it monday wednesday and friday um or actually monday and wednesday uh, and then I will rotate back in Anniversaries of the Heart for the February block. Um, I am stitching it on 28 count Lugana that I picked up from 123 Stitch. And hopefully I can be a little bit better about keeping on that two week schedule because originally my thought was to work on Anniversaries of the Heart for two weeks, rotate it out and rotate the stocking in for two weeks and just rotate them with each other, moving them around as needed so that I can complete them both hoping to complete Brian's stocking by November, anniversaries of the heart by December 31st. So let's talk about the Once Upon a Fairy Tale. So um, my plans for this one. So this one, it's a big one. It's going to take me a little while to, um, to work on this one. And here is my plan. Here's my thought process. So I really do want to start this one and I wanna start putting progress on it. But that meant adding a day into my stitch rotation, which in the beginning I didn't really want to because I liked the three projects that I've been working on and I didn't know if adding a fourth project would be just too much. But in order to put stitches and, and progress and all of that on this one, I need to assign it a day. So I've decided that Friday, January 31st, I will start stitching on this and I will work on it every Friday. My goal is a long one. I want to have this one done in 10 years. So that means that January 31st of 2030, hopefully I will be done stitching this. My long-term plans are to have it be my Friday stitch and I'm just gonna call it um, Fairy Tale Friday. And then when I have finished Queen of Freedom, Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow, and Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow, I will move my Once Upon a Fairy Tale to Saturday and Sunday. And then I will go back to having three in my stitching rotation. Those are my very long-term plans because all three of those are, I mean, Queen of Freedom is, you know, she's quite a large project, but I, I feel like I can see the pinpoint of the finish line on the horizon. But, um, 
Autumn at Hawthorn Hollow. I mean, those are like stitching mini haids. So that one I fully expect will take me the whole rest of the year and into the next year. And then I will start Halloween. And, you know, once Halloween's finished, this one will jump in. So it'll probably be a couple of years before this one goes to the weekend. That's my very, very long-term goal is to have it finished in 10 years. So in every video, you will see teeny tiny little bit of progress, but even the smallest little bit of progress is still progress. And so I'm excited that I finally get to start this because of my fairy floss mother. I thank you so much, Sandra. I really appreciate you so much for sending me all the floss. It's just amazing. I'm just totally just, it's like Christmas. So thank you, thank you. And I'm kitted and now I'm going to be stitching it. So thank you. So those are my plans uh, for the next two weeks. Um, I forgot to show home. So I will be starting that one as soon as I finish. Maybe it's cold outside. So now I think it's time to move on to the giveaway portion of the video. I'm not going to pause the video. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it going because it's now noon and I know my husband's going to be home soon and I'm not going to be done. And I think that's why I'm a little bit, not necessarily discombobulated, but my mind is like, there's a lot of stuff happening today. I have a client coming at one o'clock to pick up a quilt and I have another one coming to drop off and then all the things. It's kind of a busy day here in Pumpkin Hollow. <laughs> anyway, so in my last video, it was my flossiversary. And so I was giving away, or am giving away, or I guess technically I've already given it away. The winners just don't know it yet. Um, I was giving away three project bags, and each project bag has a chart that accompanies it for the winter project bag. The winter ABCs chart is accompanying that, and the winner is Tracy R. So Tracy R., congratulations. If you can get a hold of me via email at pumpkinhollowquilting, gmail.com. Is that right? Pumpkin Hollow Quilting at gmail.com. I will get this out in the mail to you next week. Congratulations and thank you so much for playing. The spring project bag and the spring ABCs. Hang on a second. I should have fished. I kept the charts inside so they didn't get lost. Uh, the winner of that is Maria Maldonado. Maria, congratulations. And if you can also get a hold of me, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting at gmail.com, I will get this in the mail to you next week. And then the third giveaway was a summer project bag with the summer ABCs from Little House Needlework. And the winner of that is Vanessa Jones. So congratulations, Vanessa. If you can also get a hold of me via email at pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com, I will get this out in the mail to you next week as well. So congratulations. Thank you so much to everyone who played. I really enjoyed reading through all of your guys' comments. It's always amazing. Whenever I throw out a question, it's always amazing just how similar we all are in, in um, all of our likes and our dislikes and things like that. And I just think it's, it's really, really awesome. So, and I appreciate you guys all watching my videos, for subscribing, all of the things. I am just so grateful to all of you guys and I appreciate it so, so much. So this video also has a giveaway. I was contacted by Livia from Rovaris. She is an Italian designer and she contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said that she would like to send some charts for me to do in a giveaway. And so the charts arrived just in time for my video. So there are four charts. Um, this one is, um, hang on a second. There we go. I'm just going to call this one Daisy because they don't um, have names on them. So this one is Daisy and I think it's so cute. They're all just so cute. Uh, this one I'm just loosely call him, calling Freedom. Uh, this one is a Farm. Love them. And this one I called At the Beach, but then I realized that it has North, South, East, and West. Yes, <laughs> I'm reading that backwards. Anyway, um, so if you are interested, I'm going to do four giveaways. So let's run through it really, really fast, and then I will... Um, really quickly try to think up, up, up a question because I did not do that before I hit the record button. So number one will be Daisy. Uh, number two is Freedom. Number three is Farm. And number four will be, I'll just call it At the Beach. 
So if you're interested in winning any of those in your response to my question, you need to put one, two, three, or four. You can do just one of the numbers. You can do all of the numbers. I just need some numbers so that way I will be able to search correctly for the comments and, you know, it's just easier for me to do a search if I have numbers attached to them. So if you're interested in those, make sure you put one, two, three, and four, or if you're only interested in two and three or one and two, you just make sure you put that down in the comment section below. And the question, I really should have thought of a question before I, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. Since at the beginning of the video, I talked about, um, you know, if you, you know, Carol had asked me that question and I answered it on my Floss 2 video and I was like, if you have any other questions, I can always address them here instead of putting them in the, the comment section. So let's do this. If you have a question that you would like to ask me, put it in the comment section below with one, two, three, or four, and I will answer the question in my next video. And I will only do it if I, if, cause I realize by doing that, what if I have like 50 people or a hundred people or 200 people who that enter the giveaway and then I have all of those questions. I mean, that would be like an eight hour floss tube video. So I will only answer the question if you're the winner, we'll just do it that way. And then I'll just take the other questions and I'll just kind of pepper them through all of my floss tube videos as we go. So anyway, so in the comment section below, if there is a question that you would like to ask me, ask it down below and then put one, two, three, or four, whichever one of these charts that you are interested in. Just do the, answer the question or ask me the question and then one, two, three, or four. I hope that makes sense and it's not really confusing. My mind is doing like double time because I know my husband's going to be home really quick. And so I'm trying to like wrap it up really quick. I wish that he had a hobby that he could just like go do the hobby for a couple of hours. And then I wouldn't be like, oh my God, he's going to be home. Um, so I am going to, because I've added project bags back to my shop. And so I am just going to do a quick little run through of those. And then um, that'll be it. So hold tight, just two seconds. All right. So last couple of weeks, I have been adding back into my Etsy shop. Um, I know that for a while there, the bags were going in very slowly because I had a lot of other stuff going on. But now that the first of the year has come around and things have kind of slowed down a little bit, I have been able to add things into my um, shop once again. And so I'm briefly going to go, I'm going to go through them really, really fast because again, I know my husband's going to be here. So the first bag is this one. It's just a little um, forest, foresty style bag. Uh, there is this Valentine one, which I've named on the farm. I think it was on the Valentine on the farm or something like that. And then there's this one, which I love. Kind of want to keep one for myself. And there's this one, which is kind of like fall foliage. And then this one here. Some bees. Cute little anchors. Some orangey flowers, kind of summery, like warm summer night. And then some paisleys, which for some reason my camera does not take very good pictures of. But it is very cute in person. So I've added all those back into my Etsy shop. If you are interested in that, I will put a link down below. If you're not, no worries. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you now. Thank you so much to Livia of Rovaris for sending me the charts for the giveaway. That was so generous of you and I appreciate it so much. Um, I hope you guys have a great couple of weeks that you get lots of stitching done. Don't forget to enter the giveaway down below. Giveaway winners, please get a hold of me and I uh, hope you guys will have a great couple of weeks. I'm trying to think if there was anything that I forgot to mention. I don't think so. I think that's everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that I will go ahead and leave you now. If you would like to see what I am up to every couple of days, because I haven't been very good about posting on Instagram, but you can follow me on Instagram at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I have a Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. 
um, Etsy shop, I'm trying to think, my blog, which I've been neglecting, which is pumpkinhollowquilting.blogspot.com. I think I would know my own thing. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go now, guys, because I think my husband's home. I think I heard the car. Um, hope you have a great couple of weeks. And uh, go Chiefs in the Super Bowl. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.